Hello everyone. Welcome to Power Electronics lecture series. In today's video, we are going to take a look at half wave rectifier with L load. So let's get started. This is the circuit diagram of a half wave rectifier connected to an inductive load that is L load over here. So Vs is basically given by Vm sin omega t. And in order to understand the circuit in a much better way, let us consider the positive half cycle at the first place. So during positive half cycle, the supply will be positive and negative in this particular fashion and anode will be connected to positive and cathode will be connected to negative because plus is appearing at this terminal, isn't it? So consequently, the diode will be forward biased and acts as short circuit and the current starts flowing through the load. So when the current starts flowing through the load, according to the property of inductor, what happens? It will charge to the polarity plus and minus. So it will keep charging. So let us say our supply voltage is equal to 10 volt. Very important point, just an assumption. So the inductor slowly starts charging and then it gets fully charged at some point in time and then it starts discharging. So what happens is during the positive half cycle, it keeps charging till this point. So during negative half cycle, what happens is the supply voltage will obviously be equal to negative, isn't it? Minus and plus. But you will be surprised if I say the diode still conducts because minus is connected to anode and plus is connected to cathode according to your assumption, isn't it? But that does not happen here. The reason is because inductor does not allow sudden change in current and what will happen is that the inductor will allow the current to flow in the same direction that it was previously flowing across according to the property of Lin's law. So it will basically reverse its polarity as minus and plus and it will allow the current to flow through the same direction as it was previously flowing. So we saw 10 volt was the supplied voltage in the previous case, isn't it? So during negative half cycle, the voltage will obviously slowly only increase, isn't it? So let us say we are at this point and this point is basically minus 3 volt. And we had already 10 volt supplied. So inductor would have charged it to a maximum value say equal to 10 volt, isn't it? So what happens, you have minus 10 volt here and minus 3 volt here. So 3 volt, minus 3 volt is obviously greater than minus 10 volt. And because of this, the diode is forward biased. And that is why current still flows through this path, through this path and this path. Very, very important point that you have to make a note of. So the current still flows through the load and the diode is conducting. So diode conducts during both the half cycle. Very important point during both the half cycle. Now let us derive the expression for output current and this will be very helpful for us to plot the waveforms. So the output voltage that is across the inductor can we write V is equal to L into DI out by DT that is the voltage across the inductor is given as L into DI by DT isn't it? So based on that formula. And that is equal to Vm sin omega t. That is the supply voltage. Why is it? Because of the fact that the inductor starts charging and reaches a maximum voltage as that of the voltage that is supplied. That is why we are equating this. Now, what I will be doing is, considering this particular expression, can I write Ti out is equal to Vm by L. So L I am taking to the other side and I am taking dt to the other side as well. So sin omega t into dt. Now, what happens when we integrate both the sides? So we will be left out with integration of di out equal to Vm by L is constant and integration of sin omega t into dt. Now you will be getting integration of di out is basically equal to i out minus Vm by L. Isn't it? Because sin omega t integration is minus cos omega t. So I will be writing it as cos omega t plus k. Now let us consider this as equation 1. In order to find the constant value, let, now we will be assuming t is equal to 0 and i is equal to 0 as our initial conditions. So if they have given a specific value, we can assume, but in this case we are assuming it to be equal to 0. So 0 is equal to minus Vm by L into cos omega t plus k. So when t is substituted as 0, this will be equal to 1, isn't it? 
so we will be getting k is equal to vm by omega l this is the constant value so as a whole when we substitute 1 and 2 you will be getting the expression for i out to be equal to vm whole divided by omega l into 1 minus cos omega t this is the expression number 3 now what happens at omega t when we are substituting omega t is equal to pi what happens to this particular expression i out will be equal to i max isn't it because in this expression the maximum value that is when cos phi or cos omega t is equal to pi we will be getting cos 180 degree as minus 1 so minus of minus 1 you will be getting 2 so 2 vm whole divided by omega l this is the maximum value that we will be getting expression number 4 and what happens when omega t is equal to 2 pi we will be getting the minimum value of current that is i out is equal to i min and that is equal to 0 when you are substituting cos as 2 pi 1 and 1 gets cancelled out and you will be getting 0 so you might ask me a question why is this actually required why are we actually doing this in order to analyze the waveforms this is very very important during positive half cycle what will happen for the current i out gradually it will start charging isn't it so at some value at this point that is equal to pi this is the pi interval isn't it at omega t is equal to pi i out will be equal to i max and that is almost two times the magnitude of the current so that is why it is indicated with a larger magnitude over here the inductor starts charging and during negative half cycle what happens the stored energy starts discharging and i had shown according to the property of lens law the current was still flowing in the same direction isn't it at that point it will start discharging during positive half cycle again it starts charging and the process repeats this is the expression for i out now what is the expression for v out during positive half cycle what happened the diode was conducting and as a result whatever was being supplied the inductor was charging and we will be getting the output voltage to be equal to the supply voltage isn't it during negative half cycle what had happened we had seen that the diode was still conducting so in that case whatever was being supplied same will be appearing during the negative direction so whenever the diode is conducting in the negative direction that is during negative half cycle the supply will be equal to minus vs so that is why v out is also equal to minus vs again during positive half cycle what will happen if you carefully observe vs is positive over here consequently the inductor started charging the voltage will again be positive as it is acting as the diode is acting as short circuit and as a result you will be getting like this so basically if you observe here vs and v out if you compare there is no rectification happening isn't it so basically output is basically following the input over here that means no rectification is achieved between output voltage but rectification is achieved with respect to output current for an inductive load very very important point so we are able to achieve rectification this keeps following every cycles and that is why output current is rectified but output voltage is not rectified in this case now we will be taking a look at important performance parameters that is average output current so how do we find the average value of output current we know that i out expression in general we had found out previously isn't it we have vm by omega l into 1 minus cos omega t isn't it now let me take vm inside so vm omega l minus vm omega l into cos omega t if you carefully observe this has only magnitude and this is called as the dc term this has magnitude along with a signal and that is cosine in nature so this is an ac signal so you have combination of both dc and ac signal isn't it now in order to find the average output current i average we need to consider from this particular expression if you carefully observe this term will be equal to zero isn't it average positive and negative cycles will get cancelled out for cosine so that is why this will be equal to zero we will be left out with only vm by omega l so i average is equal to vm by omega l important expression now what will happen to the rms value of output current 
So RMS value of output current can be obtained by taking the square root and squaring individual terms that is both DC and AC magnitude. So you have Vm by omega L whole square plus you also have Vm by omega L whole divided by root 2 whole square. RMS value with respect to AC we have to divide by root 2 isn't it? Now substituting and simplifying this particular expression we will be getting I out RMS is equal to Vm by omega L into square root of 3 by 2. This is the expression for RMS value of output current. I hope this point is clear. Now what is the peak inverse voltage? So the peak inverse voltage for an inductive load for a half a rectifier circuit is equal to 0. How is it possible? If you had seen the circuit operation, the diode was never reverse passed, isn't it? Peak inverse voltage by definition is the maximum reverse voltage that is appearing across the diode when it is not conducting. That is whenever it is in reverse pass state. Since it is not at all going into reverse pass condition, the peak inverse voltage will obviously be equal to zero, isn't it? So that is why you're getting zero. What is the average output voltage? Average output voltage that is V out average is equal to zero because from the waveform you had seen we had got a waveform like this output waveform like this positive and negative like this isn't it so what will happen is that positive and negative cycles get cancelled out with each other when we are considering one full cycle so that is why v out average is equal to zero what is the rms value of output voltage v out rms is given as vm by root 2 it is simple and straightforward. So basically, as a conclusion, what can we write? Current is rectified, whereas the voltage in the circuit is not rectified. It is basically following the input signal. Voltage is not rectified. So this is how you need to analyze a half way rectifier with inductive load. I hope this point is clear. In case you have any questions with respect to this video, Feel free to reach out by typing in your questions in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Keep supporting.